James Ryder. UD is among the four teams that come in today with an 8 and 3 record in Atlantic 10 play. The Flyers are tied for first and have a favorable schedule to close out the season. Today, Archie Miller squad welcome St. Bonaventure to town, as well as Wayne Jr. Trey Landers, a big target for next year's recruiting class. First half, it's Jordan Seibert out in transition. He has UD up by nine, and the Flyers look like this could be a runaway early. Scoochie Smith drives, kicks out to Sean Pierre. Fans going crazy. Dayton leads by 11, but perhaps there was no bigger roar than when former walk-on Bobby Worley, a.k.a. Bobby Buckets, rattles home a three, part of a five-point performance from him. UD the only led by eight at the half in the second. Daryl Davis finds Scoochie Smith wide open in the corner. Fans screaming, Scoochie. Flyers starting to run away for good in the second. Later, Kyle Davis hooping the harm. UD looked comfortable all day, and the Flyers pick up a big win to keep pace atop the conference. But the 75-61 win, just another in a long line of gritty performances from this team. Really good performance, a tough performance again by a group of guys that I think have shown that all season. We were dealt with some adversity during the game, losing a player, foul trouble, and we were able to sort of sustain it. And I give Jordan a lot of credit, Kyle, Deshaun, those three guys in particular really didn't come out of the basketball game. Anytime you can just get a win, whether it's you know on the road or at home, it's a great feeling. So uh, you know we just want to just continue to win and keep doing it together. Now in the win, a lot of Flyers were hitting the head on fouls. Jordan Seibert getting hit hard right here, but the biggest concern was Kendall Pollard. He only played nine minutes, and his absence would be another big blow to this already depleted Flyer squad. That'll all go down to the doctors. Um, I believe he had a collision um, on the charge, and he bumped his head, either head on head or body on head, and from that point forward, he was told he wasn't going back in. So when he plays, he'll play. If he doesn't play, we play. So it doesn't really matter. If we lose anybody um, that we have, it's a blow to the team. But, I mean, like we've been doing all year, just figuring out ways to step up and just, just keep moving forward. If Pollard is out for any length of time, that would leave UD with only six active players, five of which started the season on scholarship.